Hello, people. Um, I'm George. I'm a non services developer. And today I'm going to talk to you about memory. So memory is an amazing thing. It allows us to experience the world, remember the things we've been to, and remember the nice food we ate and the nice experiences we've had. And it's also particularly important in our digital life. However, um, in Tor, we don't have the concept of memory. Uh, the Tor network is, does not keep track of its client. It does not use cookies or anything. And every client that comes in and comes out, we forget about it. So Tor is memoryless, it's stateless. And this fact causes some issues, but it's also part of how we get security. In this talk, I'm going to go through um, how we could potentially improve uh, and introduce new features by introducing state in some way. So, for example, you might know that currently we cannot um, edit Wikipedia over Tor because Wikipedia is afraid of vandalism. And if in theory we could keep Tor, could keep state about its clients, it could potentially try to distinguish or vouch for the good clients to Wikipedia so that Wikipedia gains more uh, confidence that the good clients are going to be the ones that are editing. Um, in a similar way, only services are constantly getting attacked by denial of service attacks. And the attack works by the attacker hammering the service with traffic all the time. And we cannot stop this easily because there is no way to track how much traffic each service is, uh, each client is pushing and if client is bad or good. But if Tor could remember or the onion service could potentially keep state about the clients, it could potentially act before the attack happens. So I gave you two examples where the lack of Tor's memory is causing issues for us. And how could we uh, improve here? Uh, for example, the rest of the world um, is doing keeping state using accounts. So you can have your Facebook account or your Signal account, but that's not very good for us because accounts are linkable and they, 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 they link our activity to what we do. And this does not work for Tor. So and a, a technology that we could use um, is that we could use anonymous tokens. Tokens is a part um, of, of, of the internet that is used in blockchains and also in other protocols like Cloud Plus Privacy Pass. And it's basically like a train ticket. So by having a train ticket, you can show that you've done some effort to acquire it, but it doesn't tie to your identity. So if you drop it on the floor and someone else picks it up, um, you don't, um, they cannot impersonate you or they don't know who you are. And a similar technique can be used in computers. So for example, in the denial of service um, scenario before, the onion service could issue such tickets and give it to their clients. And the clients would then give it to the onion service when they connect. And in this way, they will get service before the attacker. So now if we had this technique of tickets or tokens, how could you use it in other scenarios? So for example, we could design a secure name system so that um, people can register names for their onions using those tickets. And we can finally have human memorable names for onion services. Um, or censored users right now need to acquire bridges by solving a captcha. And because captcha is not a hard thing to do, the attacker does it before them and they manage to harvest all the bridges. But if we could use tokens, we could have a way to give bridges more intelligently. Um, so, or we could use tokens to incentivize the community to grow. So I hope I gave you some examples of how tokens can improve things and how we could use them in Tor. So that's it for me. And next is going to go David with our um, progress on onion services. Thank you very much.